You guys want to dim lights a little bit? Would that be better? If not, just maybe, yeah? Which ones do you want to put the light? You want to pose it? Yeah, like this is good, I think, no? Yeah, like this. It's good.
of safety. Arise, arise, arise. Arise, generation, no longer forsaken. Arise, arise.
All right, so as Christians, as newcomers in Christ, uh, we have to understand, you know, what happens to a person right away when we get saved. You know, what are, you know, the things that happen? And I have five bullets, five bullets. Tell what happens. Uh, one of them is your name gets written in the book of life, right, when you accept Christ. Uh, the person becomes into a new creation through reconciliation and sanctification. So he just becomes a changed person. Number three, the person is put into the ministry of reconciliation. That's the third thing that happens. The fourth, the person becomes baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the fifth, you become a trigger for the devil. All right? So five things that happen to you once you get saved. To, uh, you know, once you get saved. And um, let's open up uh, Luke 10, 20. All right. This is uh, the first point that are uh, Luke 10, chapter 10, verse 20. All right, this talks about how uh, our names get written in the book of life if we accept Christ. By the way, this is only the first part. The second part is, uh, what do we have to do as Christians uh, in order to you know, not lose our salvation? But that will be later. Uh, Luke 10, 20. All right. It says, Never, um, Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are sh uh, subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Uh, another confirmation is Revelation 3 5. That talks about he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Right? And so, you know. That basically, you know, says a lot that uh, now we came to Christ, we are his. Our name is literally written in the book of life. And that's very important to understand because uh, we no longer belong to him. We are his now. All right, that's, you know, we're going to go deeper in. Uh, number two, uh, the person becomes into a new creation through reconciliation and sanctification. All right, so uh, please open up with me. Second Corinthians chapter five, uh, verses seventeen through twenty-one. Uh, yeah. Therefore, if anyone in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things are of God, who has reconciled us to Himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God is in him. All right? So how does this apply to us? Well, if you look at verse 18, all right, uh, we understand that uh, not all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. What does that mean? That means that God himself gave us the gift of reconciliation, meaning there's nothing that we could possibly do, right, to uh, receive the gift of salvation. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's basically what the um, verse says. And it continues, it says, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. What is this ministry of reconciliation? There's two parts of, uh, well, first of all, what does reconciliation mean? All right. Uh, and it says, uh, the word reconciliation means to restore or make a new relationship. All right. Mm -hmm. So you guys want to. And uh, the person, uh, 
that uh, gets reconciled uh, is put uh, is put into a ministry of reconciliation, meaning the reconciled has to reconcile. Uh, reconciliation. In other words, when we get reconciled, right, we become uh, new Christians in God. We become saved, right? And that's a passive uh, verb, all right? Does, does, that, does that make sense? Now, God expects us, right, to go and preach unto others the same thing. What happened to us? In other words, uh, <coughs> preach what has already a cure. Uh, that is Jesus' death and resurrection. In other words, your testimony uh, and how Jesus uh, could do the same thing for you uh, through Christ. You know, the gospel, the kingdom of God, the good news. That's our job. Uh, right away, once we accept Christ, we are in, uh, we are put into the ministry of reconciliation. And that is required for us to evangelize, to preach, etc. Et Does that make sense? Yes. Alright. Uh, now, uh, that, that covers the third point. Uh, the fourth uh, bullet is the person becomes baptized in the Holy Spirit. All right? How does that apply to us? Well, when a person accepts Christ, he also accepts the Holy Spirit because Christ and the Holy Spirit are one. All right? Lots of people get confused with what the, Holy, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is and what is water baptism. Uh, lots of people will mix that up, and that's very important to know the difference. That uh, once you accept Christ, right, right away you're baptized with the Holy Spirit. So that is how you, can, you know, like in Mark uh, 16, it says, you know, go on, and uh, these signs will follow. You shall heal the miracles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, uh, but being baptized by water, uh, it's not being saved. Lots of people, lots of Christians confuse us with uh, salvation, but but, uh, but it's an act of ritual. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, to give a better example, it's like marriage, right? So when I accept Jesus Christ, I get married to him. I get married to him without a ring. Get it? I, there's no ring. It's just marriage. But when I get baptized through the water, right? I give him the ring. Right, I, the, 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 the ring basically. Uh, let me go through. Uh, <coughs> symbolizes that spiritual baptism and Christ accomplished. Uh, basically, the ring is okay. When we get baptized in water, that is us giving God a ring that symbolizes the spiritual baptism that Christ accomplished for the believer. Uh, I mean, for the believer in his death, bu um, bur burial, and resurrection. It is a confirmation and declaration of what Jesus has done on the cross for you. In the water, once we get in the water, that, that symbolizes his death. Right? Once we're in the water, that um, represents uh, his burial, which is his funeral. Like the three days that he was there. Once we come out of the water, that uh, symbolizes his resurrection. But it does not... Uh, Save us, literally. That's symbolized, get it? It's like a uh, something that represents, something to remind, you know, like a promise, like to show you, like you, you know, got baptized by the Holy, uh, by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, you know, uh, you have to get closer to God through the water baptism. It's, it's just you have to understand. There's difference. There's a difference. I'm getting to it. All right. Uh, scriptures, Ephesians 2, uh, 8 through 9. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that none of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. All right? And, uh, what's the next? Romans 8, 8 through 17. Romans chapter 8. Yeah, Romans 
Romans chapter 8, verses 8 through 23. It says, uh, So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone, if anyone dwells, uh, wait, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. All right? That again confirms that uh, only through the uh, Spirit of baptism we're saved. Get it? Okay. Huh. And uh, one more confirmation. Ephesians 1, again. Uh, chapter 1. Thirteen through fourteen, verses thirteen through fourteen. It says, "In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also have having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of your inheritance until the redemption." of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, uh, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention uh, of you in my prayers. Amen. Okay. All right. So over here we go on to the next bullet. Uh, you become a trigger for the devil. All right. So first we went through... Uh, your name, once you become saved, right? The first thing that happens is your name gets written in the book of life. <coughs> right? The second thing is uh, the person becomes into a new creation. Right? Through reconciliation and sanctification. Uh, number three, the person is put into the ministry of reconciliation. All right? That means you have to start serving. You have to start, you have to start doing something. The person, number four, the person becomes baptized in the Holy Spirit. All right? So now we have to, now we have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Also, uh, very important. Let's see if I just mentioned that. Um, why do we need the Holy Spirit for? What does the Holy Spirit help us with? We have to know that as well. Uh, basically, let's open up. Uh, I have six points that the Holy Spirit helps us with. Uh, the Holy Spirit helps us with our weakness. The Holy Spirit uh, works through prayer. The Holy Spirit teaches us. The Holy Spirit reveals Jesus' purpose for us. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. And the Holy Spirit gives us the gifts to use. All right, so I'm going to confirm that. So Romans 8.26. Uh, it says, uh, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. All right, that proves that the Holy Spirit is, uh, helps us in our weaknesses and the Holy Spirit works through prayer. And uh, if we open up John 14, 26, says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you your remembrance all things that I have said to you. All right? So the Spirit teaches us. Now the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus' purpose for us. Open up to 2 Timothy. Three sixteen through 17. So chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. It says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Uh, this is first Timothy. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. 
chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. It says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. So that shows us what the Holy Spirit reveals uh, through the Holy Scripture, through prayer, through, you know, sermon deeds, you know, through a relationship with him reveals, he equips us. And, and the Holy Spirit convicts us uh, of sin. Galatians 5, 16 through 18. Galatians 5, 16 through 18. I, send, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Amen. Alright. Then, uh, the last thing is, the Holy Spirit gives us gifts to use. Alright, so 1 Corinthians... Chapter 12, 7 through 11. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of the healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing uh, to each one individually as He wills. Amen. All right. So now we know uh, why, what, what's the function of the Holy Spirit? Uh, why do we need it? And uh, what happens, you know, as Christians, as once we get saved, uh, our books, our, our names get written in the Book of Life. All right. I'm just gonna repeat it. Uh, the person becomes a new creation through the consolation of sanctification. Right? The person is put into the ministry of the consolation, the comforter. Number four, the person becomes baptized in the Holy Spirit. And number five, you become a trigger for the devil. Now, the trigger for the devil part. Uh, let's open up 1 Peter 5, 8 through 11. It says, be sober, be vig uh, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Alright. So, uh, the important thing is to understand that uh, once we accept Christ, it's not enough to uh, just uh, have your name uh, written in the book of life. Alright. It's not enough just to, you know, be reconciled, to get a ministry, to get baptized, you know, if the Holy Spirit. It's not enough because uh, once you're saved, all right, you're saved once. But that becomes in, uh, like you're saved once in order to remind yourself every single day of the salvation that Jesus has given you. Does that make sense? So that requires uh, action. That requires productivity to be fruitful. You, know, you have to do something to not lose your salvation because you could lose your salvation. You could see how uh, Judah lost his salvation, he was walking with Jesus the whole time, and, you know, and at the end, he betrayed him because he was greedy, you know, so, and you can see many examples of how Saul felt, you can see, 
you know, in our own lives, how our friends, they need Christ in life as well. That's why it's, it's important uh, to realize that it's, it's not enough. There's more to it. There's more to it than just accepting Christ as the Holy Spirit, and, you know, and being saved. There's more. You have to do something. And those things are things that you have to do. Uh, there's um, certain responsibilities that you have to do. And I have five of them. Five, respons- five major responsibilities that you have to do. Uh, you have to read the word of God. Uh, you have to pray and fast. Uh, you have to serve and learn. And number four, uh, attending church <coughs> in Christian groups. And number five, you must edify yourself daily. Right? If you do these five things every single day or like daily, right? You wouldn't have, you shouldn't have any, uh, I guess, spiritual, you will go spiritual. You know, you would grow, you will be stable, and you'll be able to resist the devil and uh, be productive and fruitful. Amen. All right, so uh, let's start off with um, why do you have to read the Word of God? All right, what, what, how does the Word of God help you physically? How does it help you spiritually? Well, the Word of God, let's open up 2 Timothy. 316, I mean, uh, verse, chapter 3, uh, verses 16 to 20. All right. Verses 16 to 20. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profit, profitable for doctrine, which is teaching, and reproof for correction and instruction in righteousness. All right? So through the word of God, we get to learn, we get to draw reproof, we get to convict ourselves, we get to correct ourselves, instruct, etc. It's basically the fundamental of Christianity. Without the word of God, there's no... We, we get to know the character, the characteristics of God through the Word of God. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like that's why it's very important to read the Bible daily, every single day, if you can. All right. There's different obstacles, there's different situations, but without this, there, there's no comprehension of God, and you're basically, you know, you're lost. You don't know what to do. So that's why you have to, you know, uh, uh, read the Bible daily. It affects you physically by giving you knowledge. And spiritually, uh, by giving you knowledge, you get more uh, stable because you already know how to react to certain situations when you have to pray for something or when you have to uh, do something specific. You know, like, like biblical, you know, how to talk to people. You have to become a new person. All right. Um, that's the Bible. Well, you also have to pray and fast. Uh, praying and fasting always go together. Uh, you can't separate one without the other. They're interlinked, you know. So it's it's very important. Let's open up our Matthew six six. Well, first of all, before we go there, I could I could just um. There's lots of um, reasons uh, why you should fast, and uh, I have a few reasons that I can mention here. Uh, one of the reasons to fast is to strengthen our ability to turn our attention to the Lord. All right? Daniel 9.3, if you guys want to read that. Uh, second reason, when facing a great challenge or obstacle. All right? Second Chronicles 20, 1 through 4, and uh, Ezra 8, 21 through 23. Uh, third part is to be receptive to direction and wisdom for, from God. To receive from God and get direction. Uh, to know your calling, you have to uh, pray and fast to you know get a uh, understanding, uh, revelation of what are you called for, and that's uh, Acts thirteen uh, verses one through three, and Acts fourteen chapter twenty three, right? and the last thing is to bring our flesh under submission. Right? That's why you have to fast and pray. Uh, to bring our flesh under submission. Psalm 69, 10. 
uh, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 9 27, if you get Bible version, uh, Matthew 6 16 through 18, and a few more. But I'm not going to mention them. So. You know, you have to serve. Uh, looking for a photo. You have to pray and fast. And uh, you can see how Jesus himself, when he accepted, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit right away, uh, he went into the desert and he prayed and fasted there for 40 days. You know, like, that is a necessity. We have to, we don't have to pray for uh, fasting 40 days, but we have to uh, do it in our daily lives. Like, it, that's also interlinked with reading the Bible. It's also, you have to have a vision uh, to uh, s understand why are we fasting and praying for. We have to, uh, you know, imply that to our life. All right. And also, uh, we have to serve. All right. Uh, this, this part's very important. This is number three. Number one responsibility is you have to read the Word of God. All right, number two is you have to pray and fast. All right, and number three, you have to serve. So let's open up with me, Mark 16. through 20 where it says and he said to them go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature he who believes and is baptized will be saved uh, this kind of baptism is talking about the Holy Spirit baptism and not the word of God you guys have to know the difference and um, and it says but he who does not believe will uh, he who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned and these signs will follow those who believe in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on them sick, on the sick, and they will recover. So that after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through accompanying signs. Amen. So, you know, that, that's the serving part. There's, there's also um, uh, Galatians 5, 13. And there's also uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, 19. I'm not going to go into that again. Um, also, what's very important is attending church and Christian groups. All right? Why do we have to attend church? Why do we have to... Uh, attend home groups. Um, uh, why do we have to have fellowship every now and then? Uh, let's open up uh, Hebrews ten twenty five. says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much uh, the more as you see the uh, day approaching. So, exhorting one another. In other words, edifying each other, uh, teaching each other, helping each other out. That is what is necessary as a Christian. You know, you have to do these certain things. Uh, also, uh, Matthew 18, 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. All right? Again, where two or three are gathered. It doesn't say one. Lots of Christians are, you know, being uh, deceived. You know, that they could be Christians, and, you know, they could accept Christ, they could serve, they could serve, they could read the Bible all by themselves, and, you know, not 
attend uh, church, not attend a small group, so they think they could be productive, they think they could be fruitful. But that's, no, not against, that's against the scriptures. No, that's not real. That doesn't go according to the scriptures. So you're deceiving yourself if you think that, that you can do everything on your own. That's not true. And um, also, you must edify yourself. This is number five. All right, so number one, you have to read the Word of God. All right, uh, lots of people, I just want to uh, talk about this a little more. When you read the Word of God, uh, you have a really hard time uh, to remember, to understand what you're saying. Because the devil, you know, he's trying to uh, make you, uh, trying to de deceive you. He's trying to make, make you think about something else. He's trying to do anything. He's trying to do anything to stop you from reading the Bible. He's trying to do anything uh, to stop you from praying. You know, um, every single time when we sin, right, uh, lots of Christians have this emotion that, oh, I'm such a sinner that, uh, you know, I, I don't deserve to pray because, you know, I'm not holy enough. You know, that's a false, you know, uh, lie. That's deceit. That's deception. That's not true. Uh, in fact, if you sin, you have to pray. That's when God expects you to come to him. He's like a father waiting on his son, you know. When a, when a kid sins, when your own child sins, you want to help him. You want to help him out as much as you can. So there's no excuse on why you can't pray, why you can't read the Bible, why you can't fast, why you can't serve Easter morning. You have to do these certain things. These are the most good, like fundamental things as a Christian. You have to do these certain things in order to be uh, fruitful in Christ. All right. Now, you must edify yourself daily. Uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Alright. Uh, it says, Examine yourselves as to whether you are in faith. Test yourselves. Do you, do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you are disqualified? All right? So uh, this makes, like, just by reading this, you already understand uh, verses of Matthew 7, 20, 22, where it talks about uh, uh, where um, they did miracles in his name, they healed, but God said, oh, I never knew you. You know, those uh, that word applies to those people that never... Uh, edify themselves. They never ask themselves uh, the question, uh, why am I doing this? Why am I serving God? Am I serving to be, uh, you know, to become successfully rich? Am I serving to, you know, for my, for my needs? Like, why is this happening to me? And why is God punishing me? Is it because I did something wrong? Or is it because, like, you have to ask these questions daily in your lives in order to be, uh, Fruitful in order to be productive, you have to do that. If you don't do that, uh, you're basically you're going to be one of those guys. Let's just open up to Matthew seven twenty twenty. Uh, Matthew chapter seven verses twenty to twenty three. Prove my point. Verse one. Matthew chapter seven verses twenty to twenty three. Says, Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God, uh, of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Alright? So, this basically proves, you know, that these people, like, they worship God. They uh, did miracles. They did it, but they never, uh, they were doing it with the wrong intention, with the wrong heart, because God sees the heart. That's why it's very important to edify yourselves as Christians. Like, why are you doing this? Do you have the right heart? Are you doing this for the right reason, or are you doing this for the wrong reason? Why am I being punished? Why is this happening in my life? Why, who, what, where, when, why? You have to ask questions, ask questions, and, uh, you know, 
all this drama is saying is like this whole entire thing is coming to a conclusion. So, uh, as Christians, right, there's certain things you know that we have to do, right? So, and we already went through that. And, and no, uh, first thing we have to do is read the Word of God. Second, you have to pray and fast. Third, you have to serve. Fourth, attend church and Christian groups. Five, you must edify yourself daily. And I'll do it to the end. And you have to do everything with the Holy Spirit. All right? If, if you could do, multiple, like, you have to be always led through the Holy Spirit. You know, you have to pray. You have to have this intimate relationship with Him. You have to look for Him. You have to, and it's not easy. It says that the uh, gates of heaven is narrow. You know, it's, it's not easy being a Christian. But it's, it's nothing impossible for us. God gives us uh, everything that's, you know, everything in here is available. He gives us all, he equips us with everything that is necessary to get into heaven. So we have no excuses, and we have no exceptions on why we are. The, like, if we do, if, you know, if we do accordingly to what is written, then, you know, we should be, uh, fruit, uh, we should be productive and fruitful. Like, we should have, bear some fruit. I'm not saying that you're going to be prosperous, you know, because, uh, I'm, this is not a, a sermon about prosperity, and this is not a sermon about salvation. This is a prosperity. Of, I mean, this is a sermon about how to keep your salvation, of how not to lose your salvation. You know, like, there might be certain circumstances in your life where you're going through a hell, like you're, you know, my sister, she got hit by a bus, uh, certain things with my mom, like a whole bunch of, you know, crazy things that's going on in my life. But there, we have to learn in those specific circumstances how to react, how to do things. And so we have to be fruitful. People have to see uh, how we, you know, once we get saved, people have to see a difference. They have to see a difference in the way we think and the way we act and the way we perceive things. You know, they have to see, you know, like once they start seeing uh, this fruit, even, even if your life is not perfect, even if they see, like, you will intrigue them. You will uh, you'll basically you'll intrigue them. You know, they'll, they'll see the slight in you and they'll wonder uh, what changed this person. And that will bring you closer to God. That will help you to be fruitful. That will help you to keep your salvation, you know, like throughout your entire life because we have to work for it. You know, it's a process of work. So, uh, you know, so basically that's it. You know, that's, that's what I wanted to say today. You know, and also, I could say one more thing. I could, uh, let's just read up um, why it's important to grow in God. I have a Col Colossians uh, chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Amen. All right, that just confirms everything I said. Amen. Amen. And uh, also, um, let's just open up. Uh, <coughs> First Peter. <coughs> uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 25. So it's very long. Uh, so this is very, it's very good. So 1 through 25, it says, uh, Therefore, well, that's the whole thing. Yeah. Let's go to 2 Peter. Uh, you can, uh, that's just the verse to write down for you. But 2 Peter uh, 3, 8, 3, 18. 3, chapter 3, verse 18. It says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, uh, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. 
the car. Yeah. Not on first read. I'm not playing on this. Yep. Some are this. All right, three eighteen. All right, so Second Peter three eighteen it says, "But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. Amen." All right, Amen. so Amen. that's very important. And also, uh, we forgot like prayer. Right? You guys have to, you know, if you guys don't know how to pray, right? There's always a scripture. Like you could apply this to your life daily, every single day. Just taking a verse that might apply to your life and just accepting it. Every single day, you know, like declaring it. Like, I, I could give you one example that I do Philippines uh, 4 8. I do this every day. You know, uh, what I do is family, uh, family prayer. Help, I pray to God. I pray to God. I pray to God. God, help me to think of whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report. And if there's anything virtue, and if there's anything praiseworthy, help me, Lord, to do the things that you please. Amen. That's not like that's what I do daily. I take Bible verses and I declare them in my life. That helps me to, you know, keep my prayer. That helps me basically, you know, it makes my uh, prayer life fruitful, which is very helpful. When I declare God's word, you know, that's the most powerful weapon. And also worship. I have to worship. And uh, I wanted to say something, uh, one more, uh, like one more thing. I wanted to talk about uh, how uh, how it affects us, how the physical and the spiritual are <coughs> correlated with each other. That uh, everything that you do in the physical world or in the spiritual, uh, see, they, whatever you do in the physical world, it happens in the spiritual world. And whatever you do in the spiritual world happens in the physical world. And the spiritual is eternal, and the physical is not. So the spiritual, you could say, is more real than the physical. All right? So every single time we fast and pray, it's not like we're just, you know, it might seem like we're not doing anything, but in reality, we are planting a spiritual seed that literally affects uh, a physical world, which is what we're surrounded by. It literally changes our circumstances to work uh, according to God's will. It's, it's actually like you're moving uh, God's hand through prayer and fasting. It's actually uh, very important to understand uh, that how real the spiritual world can possibly be. So, and to come to a conclusion, what I, I just want to summarize are absolutely everything that I just uh, said. Just one thing. Uh, basically, as Christians, the fundamental part, the most fundamental part of Christianity, like we have to know what happens when you become saved, right? Your name gets written in the book of life, right? So on finally, on new creation, um, temple, meaning I no longer belong to myself. Uh, I will now belong to uh, God. And that's why I have to keep myself from sin, right? The person becomes into a new creation through reconciliation and sanctification. The person is put into the ministry of reconciliation. The person becomes baptized in the Holy Spirit, and you become a tribute for the devil. Right? So in order for us to resist the devil and to become fruitful and save our, our, ourselves, you know, to keep our salvation, we have to do five things. We have to pray. We have to read the Bible. We have to serve. And we have to uh, fast. And we have to attend church. And we have to edify us. That's six. That's it. All right, so that's it. Amen. Very, very, lots of information. Lots of information. Lots of information, but lots of useful information. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> that's that's true. true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Julia. Thank you for your hard work and uh, for this uh, useful information for the ser sermon that I guess we covered a lot of stuff. Uh, but you can, in the meanwhile, get ready for, for another sermon. All right. Because maybe you can elaborate uh, on what you said a little bit more because you really, you know, touched on very important stuff. You basically summarized the whole Bible in a nutshell, <laughs> you know, and, 
40, <laughs> in 40 minutes. <laughs> 30 minutes, and I, I was never able to do that. So that's uh, you know very good. If, uh, that, that's the fundamental, the most important. The, fun, the, the most important thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But uh, I, I just want to say something because as, as you were talking, I sort of like um, began to go. And thanks. I mean, I really do appreciate. I mean, I know that certain things were was, was said specifically to me, especially the first part that was very good. As far as we have to find out our destiny and God in which direction to take further, we need to fast. You know, like Jesus did, like Paul did in Acts 13. You know, they fasted and prayed, and the Holy Spirit said, you know, uh, sort of uh, select, right? For me, Barnabas and Paul said, except further to the mission field. And uh, uh, you mentioned something else that if we need, a, if we're facing a great challenge, a great obstacle, sometimes we're willing to do all but, but fast. Not realizing that the, the, the answer lies in that discipline, in it, because that's an act of faith. Lord, I'm, I'm abstaining from food, and I need to know I'm, I'm desperate, God. You know, my, the answer from you at this point is, is you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more desperate for this answer than for, for uh, perishable food. You know, and in the Chronicles, the example that you, this example ministered to me a number of times, where, you know, they were facing a great uh, obstacle, and uh, the whole Israel started fasting, and as they were fasting and praying, the Lord, through the prophet, spoke and said, you know, that God will defeat this great enemy, this great obstacle, the challenge, and it was a, a mighty victory, not even, but a supernatural victory, that it took them more than three days to just get the spoil from their enemy that was already totally defeated. So it's not only that the enemy was taken out of the picture, the obstacle was removed, the benefits from this very thing that supposedly bothered them, that the benefits were tremendous, and it was due to the power of fasting. You know, and so absolutely, you know, absolutely. And I do thank you for, for that, because it, it's important. Because uh, we want to, like, you know, avoid that problem. You know, fasting is something that is not really, I mean, I'm talking about myself. Uh, especially, I don't know, lately, it seems like, you know, we, we keep up a little bit with the brothers support, but but it's not as, as it's, you know, the, the, as it was before, like, before, to, to me, it was it was different, you know, like, it was much more disciplinary in that specific area. I, mm -hmm. I, I do confess that I, you know, became a, a bit uh, sort of, like, lazy in that, in that regard, you know, so it, it's, it's important, really. How are you going to keep yourself in check without that? So, thank you, appreciate that. Thank you, thank the Lord for that. But but you did, did say something that I want to elaborate for five minutes before we finish. Uh, maybe seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, quickly, just a thought that I just want to share because it's just, you know, I cannot move. Uh, I can, but I choose not to. Uh, or, uh, Hebrews 10 25, you, you remember when I said that verse. Look, look what it says. It's amazing. Hebrews 10 10 24, that, that, that fellowship is together part. And it's not to say that we're to become a monastery, a close community, or build walls around ourselves and nobody welcome. No, we, we are. We want people to come to faith, uh, faith in, in Christ and serve and so forth. But, uh, but, but look what it says. It says, uh, 1025, let's read together, Hebrews. Uh, William, can, it, can you read it? Uh, 10, Hebrews 1025. Not forsake the assembly of ourselves together as the manner. As is some, the manner of some. To some who sought one another as so much as more as we see. Okay, but okay. It says, "Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching." This, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So basically, from the text, it is clear that there is a day approaching, and because this day approaching, that gives us all the more reason to be together, do you understand? Assemble together. So, you know, what, what kind of day? It says the day. Second Definite day. article. The day. It's not just a day. It's not just a day like any other days that, that, that are there. Mm -hmm. But the day. What kind of day is it talking about? Second coming of Jesus Christ? Yeah, it, it, it's talking about the coming of the Lord. So, as closer we get to the day, this particular principle needs to be applied all the more, the Bible says. You know, in Hebrew thought, 
uh, and interpreting scripture. Actually, Apostle Paul, he was a rabbi, Pharisaic school. He was in, in the school of, of Gamaliel, which was in the school of Hillel. And there were seven principles. They call it seven midot, or points of interpreting the Bible. One of the points was kal vachomer. That's, you know, means from light to heavy, which means if something is applicable that the Bible teaches in a light situation, it becomes more, you understand, applicable in a heavier situation, which means if the people of the first century, the book, the book of Hebrews, the epistle of Hebrews was written, they were exhorted, you understand, to, to, to get together and assemble together and not forsake the the, 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 the assembly, it means that 2,000 later, 2,000 years later, the day even closer, 2,000 years later than it was for them, all the more as you see the day approach. Do you understand that? So if something is applicable in a light situation, it becomes more so in a heavy situation. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, so, so that's the principle, and it talks about the day. And, and quickly, I'm just going to give you a few verses, and, and we're going to pray. Look what it says. Uh, Ilya said it. Open up Matthew 7.22. Look what it says. 7.22. Matthew 7.22. Look what it says. Uh, if you have it, say Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Many will say to me, Jesus is talking, in that day. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Many will say to me, in that day. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name. And you will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Again, many will say in that particular day. Do you see that? There's an emphasis on the day. Open with me Acts chapter 17, verse 30. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. Apostle Paul standing before the crowd of very smart people, people uh, uh, of philosophy, people of, of, of advanced thought of the day, people that were seeking wisdom. It was Greek people. And he's basically talking not just to an average Joe of the Greek society, but these are, these are the geniuses. These are the philosophers of the modern time, the contemporaries of Paul. These are the people that know what they're talking about because they were part of an elite club where they were gathering. You could not just enter that club, you know, without without knowing your game, without knowing what you're really talking about. So these people are talking about they are they are aimed, you understand? They are armed with with with, with, with wisdom and, and wisdom of this world, obviously, and philosophical thought. And Paul is preaching to them. He's preaching to them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Saying that I was passing by through your city and I see many gods that you are worshiping, many deities, many idols around. But then there was this one statue, and it was it says to an unknown god. And Paul used he derived from that particular opportunity. He said, This is the God that I'm talking about. You see, this is exactly the one that I'm talking about. But the reason I'm preaching this unknown God to you, so that he, he may become known to you. As a matter of fact, he revealed himself, say, uh, himself in the face and appearing of Jesus Christ. That's the God. That is the God that is yet unknown to you, but he is very near. He's not far from you. He created you and he made you. He gave you places to dwell, geographical location. He determined the, his, the time in history you're going to be born, male, female, what parents, what to, you know, uh, what everything was predetermined in your birth and your how you came about and so forth. And he's talking about that to them. You understand? And then he concludes this message with this. Acts chapter 17, 30. Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. God commands all men everywhere to repent, which simply means turn around. Turn your thoughts around because he has appointed a day, now it's a day, on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Do you see? So basically, Paul is appealing here to these masses 
about the judgment day that is approaching. And he says, because this day is inevitably coming, God commands all people to repent, not to put aside, but to repent and accept Jesus. Why? Because this day approaching and nobody can stop us. You understand that? And that is the very reason he says, repent, because the day will come when God will judge the world by the man, namely Christ Jesus, that he rose from the dead. Do, do you see that? And now, if we look at the book of Proverbs, it's a very interesting thing which, what we find, because it really gives us everyday things, and you know, God is sharing with us how we are to react to those sometimes from the first look, very simple things in life. For example, be meek. A gentle answer will break the bone, right? Do not be hastened with anger, but, you know, do just the opposite and you will see how God will turn everything around. Basic things. Do this, don't do that. Business affairs, family affairs, husband, wife. But besides that, there is a spiritual deep meaning at times that we find in the book of Proverbs. And quickly open with me, Proverbs chapter 7. Look what it says. Proverbs chapter 7. And interesting. Proverbs chapter 7. Look what it says. Verse 6. Now, the, the observer... The wise observer gives an account of what he witnessed, right? And through that account, he is trying to share with people of God an important message that applies on two levels. Look, for at the window of my house, I looked through the lattice, and I saw among the simple, I perceived among the youths a young man devoid of understanding. What, what made him devoid of understanding? Passing along the street near her corner, and he took the path to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And there a woman met him with the attire of a harlot and a crafty heart. She was loud and rebellious. Her feet would not stay at home. At times she was outside, at times in an open square lurking at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him with an important face. She said to him, I have peace offerings with me. Today I have paid my vows. So I come out to meet you diligently to seek your face. And I have found you. I have spread my bed with tapestry, colored coverings of Egyptian linen. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloe, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until morning. Let us delight ourselves with love. For my husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him. And he will come on that appointed day. The husband is not home. He will come back on that Appointed day. Now, obviously, if we apply the situation to everyday life, it's very simple, right? I mean, a woman is married, but she's also, she obviously has a husband, but what happens? She is also lurking the streets to find somebody else. Do you understand? She is a cheater. She is not, she is an infidel. She is not faithful to her husband. The husband left to the far country, right? But he's going to come when? Appointed day. That's a you know regular situation. Could happen. You know, it happens left and right. They even have shows. Cheater. You know that show, right? They, they like send somebody with a hidden camera or whatever the case may be. And you know, like a nice girl. And the dude is like, oh. Next thing you know, his wife is meeting him, meet, meeting him there, you know, right at the spot. You know, that's it. But also, you know, if we are to understand and perceive this thing spiritually, what does it talk about? Just a bit of church. Church. Oh, the church. 
It talks about the church and the disposition of the heart of believers that are part of the church towards a man and a husband that left on a long journey but will come back on the appointed day. But upon that day, I can allow myself to play around with lust. That's what it talks about. Do you understand? Basically, cheat on God. Basically, with a face that has no shame in my game, just, you know, take whatever I have and basically cheat on God. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It says to avoid that, we need to stay together in a close fellowship with genuine believers. Because it says, stick together all the more in a corporate body as a bride of Jesus Christ as you see the day approaching. The approaching of that day should not uh, sort of keep me in a loose mode, in a mode that is sort of like, ah, whatever. It comes as it comes. We'll deal with it as it comes. But in a mode of expectation, be ready to meet him on that day. Amen. What makes us, if you think about it, what we can talk more about it, but I don't want to take time. We're going to finish. But what makes us different from people of unbelief? Our look, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Listen, if I stay, if I'm on a train and I see people around me, they look just like me. Some of them unbelievers look way better than that. So what makes me different? It's not my haircut, it's not the way I dress. Sometimes, more, but overall, that's not what makes us different. What makes us different is the content inside of us, whether there is faith, right, or there is no faith. But what is faith? Faith is assurance, right, in the things that are invisible. Faith is when I know the day is coming and making all, all proper preparations for the day even though it's physically not here yet. Faith is, I know what's going to happen just simply because God said it shall happen. And I'm making necessary preparations for that. Do you understand? In accordance with that. That's exactly what's happening. The whole life of the believer, guys, if you think about it, it's centered, it's focused. What makes us different from other people? We work just like other people. We go to school. We eat the same food. If you really think about it, what, it, what makes us different? It's not that we're any better than anybody else. We're just like all the rest of the world. I mean, if we're under the illusion that we're so good, I want to disappoint you. You're not. And I am not. We're just like everybody else. Flesh and blood. That's it. But what makes us yet different? We have an ability to see the unseen, to perceive things that are yet to happen in the future as though they're already happening now. Amen? Amen? So the day that is approaching, basically, this is what the whole life is to be summed about. It's not that I'm to cast people away like, yo, 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 it, 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 it ain't about you, it's about the day. No, I'm to consider all that the scripture teaches me. I'm loving people, caring for people, serving others, doing what I can. Why? Simple reason. The day is coming and I need to get ready for that. Be together fellowship. I need to get ready for that day. It says all the more as you see the day approach. Whatever input I need to bring, I need to do that. The day is approaching. Are you crazy? What day? Yeah. See, you might see me as crazy simply because you don't believe, but I believe. That's what makes me different. That's the only thing that makes me different from the rest of the world. I believe. That's it. That's it. I simply believe what God says, or I don't believe. Amen? Look what Paul writes. Second Timothy, Second Timothy 6. Second Timothy 4, 6 through 8. See me soon. All right. You got the see me soon? Second, see me soon? 4, 6 to 8. Look what he says. For I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. 
I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept, say, the faith. The faith. You see that? I have kept the faith. I've kept. And now he says, finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me when? On that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved is appearing. Do you see? Mm -hmm. Meaning that Paul was literally around the corner from having his head shot off and fully beaten. Was completely aware of the fact that that is going to happen right next to him. That's exactly what he writes. I'm being poured out as a drink offering. Meaning my life is going to be like an empty glass I am about to be completely emptied out for God. You understand? Like a drink offering. God. My life is about to vanish. But I have kept the faith. And now the reason that I'm going in the present time, in the now, physically, the reason I'm going through what I'm going through, simple. I'm looking forward to the day. I'm looking forward to what God has in store for me. That's what makes it so hard. Because it's not right there. Because it's not anywhere. You understand? Because it's not instantaneous. Microwave experience. You put it, 30 seconds, pop, pop, pop. Got a beautiful pump from something that doesn't even look like that. Just a silly, like corn. You understand? The day. One of the things that, that you mentioned is just sort of stuck, you know, stuck out so clearly. And you said that's the reason. That I'm not I'm not the only one. I'm not so unique in this case, Paul right? He says to all. To all, to whoever, whoever you are, wherever you are, what part of the world you are, what profession you have, what career, goals, aspirations, whether you're apostle or you are usher, doesn't matter. To all who love the appearing of God and to all that are willing to continue to endure looking forward to that day, all have an equal shot at this, equal opportunity no favorites, no pick and choose, all have an equal shot to make it to that day and receive it as their own. Amen. Amen. So a vital part of this is just being together, fellowshipping together. And obviously all of what we heard tonight is definitely a vital part to contribute to the day. To contribute so I can develop properly and be sort of prepared to meet the day and be confident. Amen. I just wanted to share that. I thought it was important. And uh, let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you so uh, much. Lord, we 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 thank you, Lord, for this for this time together. Lord, that that your grace is here and, and that your mercy is here, Lord, and your goodness is here still uh, available for us, Lord, and, and it is visible in our lives, Lord. And for that we are so thankful, Lord. Um, we just ask, Father, that in, in light of what was said. That you may forgive us, Father, for all of those shortcuts that we constantly do take uh, in our lives. Uh, that that we, we try to, to, to just have this uh, microwave experience with you, Lord. And, and avoid all of these musts and, and these to-dos, Lord, in your, in your word that, that, that you tell us to do. And uh, somehow expect and for everything to work out in a, 
in, in some some kind of illusion way a little bit. Uh, but we understand, Lord, that, that, that we if we are to be successful, we need to apply your principles and we need to be obedient to what you call us to. Uh, and, and I do thank you, Lord, for this uh, a reminder, Lord, of the fundamentals of our faith, Lord, that, that, that were discussed here today, Lord, and shared with us. And, and, I, and we, we ask for forgiveness, Lord, uh, when we just uh, make wrong assumptions, Lord, and that when we uh, try to measure up and live to our own illusions rather than uh, the reality that is uh, plainly stated in your holy scriptures, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for forgiving into temptations, Lord, and, 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 and sort of telling ourselves that, that somehow, some, some day, some in, in, in the near or far future, but not now, not now, not now, not now. Uh, Lord, forgive us for that. And, and I pray that, that the reality, Lord, of, 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 this, of this inevitable day that, that will approach for each one of us, it would strike us, it, was, it, it, was, it would awaken us and hit us, Lord, uh, and, 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 and allow us to, to just, just get up and, 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 and sort of shake up, Lord, and, 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 and make ourselves ready. Uh, to meet you, uh, as as we see in the life of, of Apostle Paul, that the one who said to follow him and imitate him, even as he imitates you, Lord. Uh, help us, help us, Lord. And we, we heard today that your spirit, Lord, helps us in our weaknesses, and indeed your, your word promises that. So I pray that your spirit may fill us up, Lord, and, and, and help us, Lord, to understand that, to uh, clarify things to us, Lord God, that we would not be living in a fog and an unclear uh, understanding as to what really happened uh, with us and what is yet to take place. But help us to receive your word and, and for all it's worth and, uh, and it's with the simplicity of, of the heart, Lord, uh, in faith, not in doubt and disbelief, but in faith. In Jesus' name, Lord, and I bless my dear friends and I, and I bless uh, all of us here, Lord, uh, Lord, that we may apply these simple principles, but yet um, they're very simple, but yet it, it, it seems that as every day goes by, uh, Lord, somehow they're, they're not connected to the day. Somehow it's, it's not there as, 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 as it should be, as it ought to be, Lord. Uh, and, and we just I just ask, Lord, that for all of that to come to, to the right order, Father God, in Jesus' name, amen. Indeed, that we would believe, that we would become believers, Lord, and, and not doubters and not philosophers, Lord, in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, I pray, and, and, and I, Lord, expect that your power will fill us up, Lord, that we would uh, do far exceedingly greater things than we even think we can do, Lord, because we can do all things through Christ Jesus, our Lord, and we know that nothing is impossible to those that really trust you, Lord. We want to be uh, amongst those people in those ranks, Lord. Uh, people of true belief, people of sincere hearts that are devoted to you, Lord. Let your blood cleanse us from all impurity, Lord, I pray. And uh, let the fellowship of you be restored. And uh, this fellowship, Lord, I pray that it may include all of these ABCs that we will, were reminded of today. In Jesus' name. We do expect mighty breakthroughs in every area Lord, of our lives. That we may be those stars that shine forever. For your glory, Lord. In your name we ask. Amen.